they can join as as Kurt gets started with the, the presentation. Um, so I wanted to introduce everyone and um, welcome you all to the Law Suprema lunch. My name is Alex and I'm the community manager for Law Suprema Works. We're a new co-working space in Tucson. Um, we just opened about a couple weeks ago and we are open for, um, for folks to come and have a, a clean and inspiring place to do their work. We have private offices, dedicated desks and flex memberships available. Um, and we do a lot of we do a lot of community building too. So right now we're doing virtual virtual community building. Um, and as it becomes safer to meet in person, we'll be doing more of that as well. Um, but we're we're excited to provide a, a community oriented co working space for everyone. Um, so again, welcome to the La Suprema lunch. Like I said, we're going virtual for now. Um, one day these will be in person. We'll get to share some awesome information and. Um, great presenters over the lunch hour. Um, we our, our May schedule has really lined us up to help folks focus on their business online, digitizing um, their business and really getting themselves set up for success um, in the online world. And we are, um, we're, we're gonna have more, um, like a, a different setup for June, um, some tasks to do with mental health, some accounting, um, it's a little bit of everything. Um, and if you want to stay in the loop on these, um, all you have to do is join our newsletter. And you can do that by just heading to our website at lawsupremaworks.com. Alrighty. So today, I'm really excited to present Kurt Bullock. He is with Produce Department. Um, he's the owner um, of his own company that focuses on e-commerce. He has been a member at Anexo, um, our little annex to Law Suprema for about a year now. Um, and he's just super knowledgeable and a really an expert in this, this field. Um, and so as the presentation goes on, if you all have questions or comments or anything, um, you can feel free to put the questions in the Q&A section. Um, there's like a little, a little Q&A section opposed to, as opposed to the chat, um, where you can drop those questions in and we'll save those for the end. We'll have about 15 minutes for questions at the end. Um, but we love questions, so I really encourage that you, you drop those in there. Um, alrighty, and then other than that, I'm really excited to introduce Kurt, and um, I hope you all enjoy. Great. Thanks, Alex. Let's see. Let me share my screen. Okay. So, um, as you guys know now, I'm Kurt Bullock, uh, founder of the Produce Department. We're an e-commerce growth agency. Um, so we help grow e-commerce sales um, using tools like paid traffic, uh, email marketing, email automation, website conversion optimization, those sorts of things. Um, so today we're gonna talk about growing your store, uh, your online sales using Shopify, but most of this stuff could be substituted for other platforms. Shopify is the one that I'm most familiar with uh, as a Shopify partner, but you can do lots of this on Square and, and other platforms as well. So hopefully that's applicable to wherever you live online right now. Um, so, and specifically, I'm gonna be talking about strategies for brick and mortar retailers, uh, sort of, focusing online now, maybe for the first time, or maybe it's always been sort of a small side thing, uh, and now you're having to really shift attention. So I've got uh, some ideas to put together on here. So today we're gonna talk through uh, a few tips. We'll start out with just some quick tips on improving cash flow as it comes to you know selling online. And then we'll talk about actually growing your online sales um, and then I'll wrap it up talking about some different tools and uh, just weaving a couple different ideas in there together. And then we can do some Q and A and uh, talk about uh, anything that you guys like at that point. So to kick it off, e-commerce recently has seen a huge explosion. Um, people are, are buying online and in many cases, more than ever, uh, we have client accounts that are doing really well now um, that, you may not have expected. Um, you know, initially people thought that the only stores that would be doing well online would be uh, stores selling essentials. Um, and so, but you know, maybe stores selling t-shirts and, and things like that might not do as well. 
I've actually seen all of these other shirts selling what you would consider non-essential items doing really well uh, online now. And we'll talk about some of the things that they did to, to make that happen. But I just want to make that point that even if you don't think that this is something that your products would be something that people are purchasing right now when they're dealing with, you know, staying at home and quarantining, um, you may be, may be wrong. And I'm seeing that most stores can have success right now online. Okay. So uh, real quick, let's rewind to Q4 of 2019. Uh, E-commerce sales represented about, um, I think, 12% of all retail sales, uh, and they had projected that it would, it would reach 30% when we got to the year 2030. So now COVID has come and changed things quite a bit, and Bank of America is reporting that we just hit uh, 30% or higher. Um, so we've essentially fast-forwarded you know, to the year 2030 in terms of e-commerce adoption rates. Um, so that's, that's exciting. I think that we're going to see the pendulum swing back and forth as stores open up. Um, but I think e-commerce e adoption rates are, are here to stay and they're going to continue to climb up. All right. So let me just jump into the presentation and I can talk through some of these ideas as we go through the content. We'll start by talking about improving cash flow uh, through inventory management. I mean, if, one, if your primary sales channel is your retail store and that is closed, um, you know, we're going to talk about a few things that you can do in the, in the interim. So quick wins. First, uh, I would look at extending payables with uh, suppliers. See if you can work to renegotiate your terms. Um, obviously, you know, a favorable outcome uh, is good for both you and your vendors. And so it could be a win-win solution um, to, you know, avoid anything, any, anything negative. Um, pause any orders that you have, uh, or at least reevaluate them and look at any auto replenishment orders that you have. And then I like to do something called an ABC inventory analysis. It's essentially where you are prioritizing your products um, and shifting your focus towards moving the inventory that you have so that your cash isn't tied up in inventory and stock. Um, if you're using Shopify already, there's an app called Stocky uh, and it's free and you're already equipped to perform this analysis. So I've got a little arrow pointing up there to ABC analysis. You could click into your SKU and variance report to see the grade assigned to each SKU. A products are going to be the most valuable uh, to your business. They, you know, I think that you can change these uh, these grades, but I, I think that it comes 80% of your revenue is going to be uh, graded on, on the A products. So products that represent 80% of your revenue. B products represent 15% of your revenue, and C products are 5%. Um, collectively, they can account for hundreds of small purchases, um, but you know, if, at this stage, you may want to consider focusing on uh, discounting these C grade products so that you can increase cash flow and make room for products that do move, right? For your A grade products. You don't want the C grade products taking up all of your space and paying for that. If you don't have a way to perform an ABC analysis, you can use your intuition uh, and tap into your store staff's knowledge to just look at historical sales data and identify ABC grade products. Um, thus, as I mentioned, the stocky plan can be installed on the Shopify plan uh, or higher for free. Um, next, I've got gift cards. So selling gift cards is another great way for retail stores to uh, bolster cash flow. Gift cards can be used for future in-store purchases, uh, for online purchases, or sending to somebody as a gift. Shopify, they used to... Uh, gift card feature used to be available in some of the higher paid plans, but not for the lowest paid plan. They've extended that to all plans now. So everybody has access to, to gift cards. Uh, that was a request given the, the current circumstances. I'm glad they made that change. But, you know, I've seen in recent weeks that gift cards have quickly become a way for uh, customers to invest in their favorite merchants. And uh, it's kind of even providing solidarity, right? Uh, during this challenging time for businesses, I've seen different websites about promoting gift card purchases for local businesses, even here in Tucson, uh, that have made a big difference. But uh, gift cards is, is a great, a great strategy. Um, so from inside the Shopify admin, you can uh, you can just you visit the gift cards tab. You can customize the main image. 
um, the sales channel availability, which just means essentially making sure that you can purchase it online. Um, and then you can set up the gift card denominations that customers can purchase. And the gift cards can be purchased digitally by, uh, sorry, they can be delivered digitally uh, by email and redeemed online or in person at any time. If you have stock that you need to move, and we kind of talked about some of that C stock, uh, you could even consider promoting it with the purchase of a gift card. So for example, in this screenshot, I've got a um, free water bottle with purchase of a gift card. And in Shopify, you can set this up using something called an automatic discount. It's just a rule that you set up. Um, and so it's a great way to move slow moving stock and encourage uh, people to buy gift cards right now. Um, if you are on Shopify, you wanna figure out how to get this set up, feel free to, to message me afterwards or you can just visit help.shopify.com. Grab a quick drink. Okay. Next, um, and we're still talking about cash flow saving items. You can improve cash flow by reducing shipping costs. And so, with you know all the uh, businesses shipping shifting to online orders and local delivery, um, your costs can you can experience some higher costs initially with all the packing materials and shipping. Um, so, we recommend that first use up any boxes and materials that you have on hand. And then you could consider using free packaging from uh, most mail, mail carriers like uh, UPS, USPS, DHL Express. Um, and for any orders that you are in the process of fulfilling, um, I've seen it work really well to add a short note or a postcard to the package uh, to thank customers and um, sort of, in, uh, you know, thank them for their support. And you can also you, uh, encourage them to continue shopping online with you, right? It can be kind of a way to help redirect their attention to your online store. Um, if you're not already, uh, and again, if you're on Shopify, you can use Shopify shipping. Shopify has essentially negotiated cheaper shipping rates uh, because of the collective power of all these store owners. Um, and so uh, you can get great rates with major carriers. Um, and that will allow you to print labels from home or from your office. Uh, to schedule pickup times, things like that. It's a, it's a great setup. Okay, let's move into growing your online sales. So our strategies here to get uh, your customers that may be used to shopping with you uh, in store to using your, your online presence in your, your store. So you know, customers now, our social distancing and quarantining in different uh, geographies are are in a state of uh, you know lockdown or emergency. So digital communications are more important than ever uh, right now. And so you may be already updating your social media and website regularly. If so, good job. Um, that's that's what you should be doing right now. But I've got a few best practices to help make up for some of the loss in foot traffic that you may be experiencing right now. So we'll start by talking about your website. Your website is obviously the digital representation of your brand. If you've got a store, then customers likely know or they assume that you've got a website. And so this is a good time to roll up your sleeves and make sure that everything is up to date and optimized on the site. The first thing that you should consider is just making sure that all your products are available online. If you had products that were only sold in store, uh, previously, consider you know making sure that they are available online, and if you're using Shopify, make sure that you've got the online channel selected, uh, not just in store. Um, this makes sure that customers can see everything that you're selling, and if you have products that you're no longer selling, make sure to clean those off the site. So here I've got an example, but uh, of uh, a brand Lisa, and. So you want to make sure that your product pages are as optimized as you can. And, and I've got a few sort of tips around that. So initially, um, it's a good idea to prominently display any badges, seals, and guarantees on there. You can see in this screenshot, they've got the 100 night uh, mattress trial, free shipping made in the USA. Um, Lisa does a good job by, by highlighting all of those things. Uh, and I would also recommend considering uh, that you add lifestyle shots to your product pages. That makes a huge difference. You may, you know, a lot of stores start out with just product on white. 
um, that they either receive from the manufacturer or that they've maybe taken in, in front of something just for the e-commerce store. But I've seen that, uh, especially for customers that are used to shopping in store with you, having lifestyle shots really helps them to get a sense of what the product could look like in their house or on them, right? If this is a clothing item that you can have a model wear or something like that. Um, you know, especially in fashion, beauty, and other sort of aesthetic products where customers really like to try on and, and visualize before buying. So uh, leverage your highest quality assets on your product page, include lifestyle shots, um, and also you want to make sure that your site looks good on mobile. Depending on your target audience, the majority of your customers are probably browsing on their mobile devices, and so mobile is crucial. So um, essentially, you know, the first step I would take is just making sure that everything is functional when you, when you visit your store from, from your mobile phone. Make sure that your add to cart button isn't hidden by an image or something like that, right? And that the purchase and checkout process uh, is, is a smooth process while you're on mobile. Again, that there's nothing sort of obstructing any of the buttons, that it's clear what the next step should be. Um, I like to highlight add to cart buttons and next step buttons uh, in a color that's distinct from the rest of your, of your color palette potentially that you, you know, have, have um, a color that's just used for these next step buttons. Um, you want to make sure that your contact info and support information is all accurate and up to date. Um, your return policy, shipping policy, and, uh, and all of this information um, should be clear and updated right now. I mean, one of the, we've done customer surveying recently, and we found that one of the biggest uh, confusions that customers have when they're visiting, uh, re, you know, a, a brick and mortar sort of retail stores, online store, is they want to make sure that it's actually active and that if you buy something from there, somebody's paying attention and they want to know what the ship times are. So it's a really good idea to make sure that you acknowledge it at the top of the site. I think I might have an example. Yeah. Um, so at the top of this site, I've got, uh, you know, deliveries as normal on most sizes. Um, but on other stores, we've also said things like, um, you know, we're still shipping. Um, just things that let people know the site is alive and active. These guys, they've put together a COVID-19 update page, um, which is also an interesting idea. But really, the more information that uh, your customers have, the more in control they feel. So I, I like to you know, recommend that maybe you take a moment to write down a list or even ask your customers all the questions or concerns they have relating to taking action on your website. Um, it's, you might find that, that there's some things that you didn't think of and then address those either with messaging on the, on, on the top bar of your site or if it requires a little bit more than that, you can link from your top bar, bar uh, messaging to a COVID-19 style update page, whatever you decide to call it, right? But as I mentioned, be sure that you let customers know you're still shipping orders. Well, if there's any change to your shipping times, I mean, I recently purchased from a store that um, shipments were delayed quite a bit. It was like a three week shipping time for this product. Um, I believe it's because there was a huge spike in demand. It's real. This is a really good time to set expectations. Um, I still ended up purchasing that that product because I knew going into it what it would be like. Um, you don't want to set your customers up to have a, a negative experience on your store. Um, if you do have a product like that uh, or a situation where because of back orders, pre orders, high demand, whatever it is, there's a really long ship time, be sure that you continue communicating with your customers in the interim so they know you haven't forgotten about them. Um, you can use you know simple marketing automation tools to send a post purchase email, right? That essentially says, hey, you know, your order's on its way, it's still being fulfilled. Uh, and then this is another opportunity that you can use to engage with them, right? Teach them more about your business, any other products that you offer, um, invite them to follow you on social media, things like that. Those, those post-purchase emails are super valuable. And it's funny, I didn't expect this when I first started looking at the stats, but post-purchase emails actually generate a number of sales themselves usually. Um, I usually find that they're the third most valuable email behind your welcome email and your abandoned cart email. Um, so they're, it's really important. Well, the reason for that is that post-purchase emails are like, they have the highest open rates of any, any email that you receive, right? When you buy something, you always open that next email that comes. So um, it's a great opportunity. All right. Um, Next, I've got an example excuse me, of adapting 
messaging. So this is um, Ohm Organics. And in this case, they have shifted their, their messaging on their homepage, putting emphasis on sort of the self-care aspect of their skincare line uh, while everybody is at home. So for your business, think of ways that your products can make life easier while self-quarantining, while at home, right? And whatever people are doing right now. Um, I've got a client that um, they sell photography equipment for usually for larger events and professional photographers, which right now there's, you know, there's a big decline in people uh, hiring photographers for events and things like that. And so we've, we looked through the product catalog and found that there was a product that sort of matched what was happening right now. And in, in his case, it was a light, actually it's a light that I'm using on the corner of my screen right now that, that people can attach normally to cameras, but he's got, we've got a suction cup so you can attach it to the back of your screen since so many people are on Zoom calls these days. Um, and so, and that has turned out to be sort of a runaway product. We're selling more of these than we did of his camera, his original camera gear. We changed the homepage as well to focus on messaging that, that addresses Zoom calls, FaceTimes, uh, you know, live stream events, all the things that people are doing right now and businesses are doing. So, um, well, we've touched on this already, but, uh, but, you know, we want to make sure that we're communicating with our customers. So, um, if you, ha you know, if you aren't already, make sure that you're posting on social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, if that's one of your, your channels and send out emails to customers, just your, your entire customer list, letting them know about reduced hours, closures, and how to reach you. Um, and again, this is a, another touch point that you can use to drive people to your online store. Um, many stores have gotten really creative with ways to promote items on Instagram. Um, the uh, livery shop, they've started building outfits in their Instagram stories. Uh, so as you scroll through the different frames of their Instagram story, they're showing how different items of clothing uh, look together and, and building outfits this way, uh, which, you know, they're trying to help people figure that out since they're not able to kind of do that themselves in store. Um, Easy Tiger Goods, they've adapted their Instagram messaging to promote this sort of work from home norm um, by posting a, a photo of a curated stationary set, right? Um, it says work from home can be cute, uh, all available in store and online. So that, I, I would just encourage you to, to uh, at least subtly address and pivot your messaging to uh, address kind of the current circumstances um, without being too on the nose, right? But um, also recommend making sure that you update all of your bios so that customers know what's going on with your store uh, at a glance. Uh, recommend ways that uh, customers can support you right now. Um, I've seen this work really well where if you have, if you, you know, if you need support, a lot of times your loyal customers will help you if that's in the form of buying uh, gift cards that they can redeem in the future. Um, so it's, it's important to just put that information on there. Um, try, this is a good time to try interacting with your customers, maybe in a way that you haven't up till now, um, running contests online, um, create a hashtag that customers can engage with, um, ho hosting live, live stream and virtual events. I mean, right now in sort of cultural at large, you've got Saturday night live, uh, Bon Appetit, uh, Jimmy Fallon, all these big media companies, uh, and operations are broadcasting from their homes. Um, so this is a great time to get in people, you know, to trying some of these things out. Um, and you don't need to have sort of the pressure of everything looking exactly right. Um, uh, and, you know, there's really never been a better time to get into live streaming as this is the way that people are now, you know, communicating with all of their brands. Um, so, but whatever you choose, just make sure that you're updating people on social media to keep them um, uh, in the loop as to what's happening with your store and how they can get, buy products from you. All right. Um, this is also a really good time to revisit uh, if, you've, if you've got a paid traffic strategy in place right now. Um, so if you're doing advertising on Facebook, Instagram, um, uh, Snapchat, any of these plat platforms, you wanna revisit this. And if you are in a position where you need cash right now, Make sure that you turn off any underperforming campaigns 
a lot of times your prospecting campaigns, if they're working well, great, keep them going. But otherwise, you might want to focus on uh, retargeting, right? So essentially, the can find the campaigns that are most profitable for you and keep those ones uh, enabled. If there's more questions about uh, all of this, we could talk about it in the Q&A. But um, second, uh, you can upload your customer lists to Facebook and then actually run ads specifically to that customer list. So that's a great way to reach your customers that are active on the platforms. Um, I've seen stores, uh, you know, promoting gift cards, promotions, um, you know, different relevant products, products that are relevant to the moment. Um, review any active campaigns that you have and make sure that the, that the imaging and the messaging sort of fits what's happening right now. Um, a lot of people are, are noticing in their feeds that if there's, you know, if your ad features a big group of people, it doesn't seem like you're paying attention right now. Uh, so, you know, that's just an example, but themes around travel and uh, that sort of thing could be less effective right now. If you position it right, then you can make it work, but just make sure that you don't have anything running by default that you kind of forgot was still running, right? Um, and again, focus most of your spend on kind of that low funnel, which are your customers and people that engage with you on social. Third, um, you can leverage search advertising with uh, Google Shopping ads to help uh, serve your brand to customers that are actively looking for your products online. Um, this is inside Shopify. So there's a Shopify app. Um, it's the Google shopping app by Shopify that makes it really easy for you to connect your store and its products to Google shopping. Um, so the app will automatically synchronize the products that you have in store. So your, your inventory numbers, the product photos, uh, descriptions, images, all of this information will be sent over to Google shopping. Um, and then you can, using the, the app, again, without having to get real deep into, you know, being an advertiser, just using the, the Shopify Google Shopping app, you can set a budget and then Google can optimize using smart campaigns to, to show these to the right people. So this is something that is a good, it works well even if you start with a low budget. If you're new to Google advertising, they are giving out $100 credits when you spend 25 um, so the credits automatically applied to your account. If you create a new Google ads account and spend $25 through the Google shopping app, then, then they'll credit that hundred dollars to your account. Um, so, but overall, this is a good time to evaluate your ad spend, make sure that you're not wasting dollars, uh, and that you know what the messaging is on all of your channels. You're not inadvertently sending uh, messaging that you, you know, isn't the best, um, image or, or or copy for this moment. Um, here I've got uh, some additional tools and tactics. So when you're shifting your focus from offline to online, it's important to consider the online, the experience of shopping online with you, right? Um, so I've got a, a few tools here that work well, and I've tried to pick tools that work well with both sort of the uh, in uh, in store like point of sale systems as well as e-commerce. Um, I've also tried to pick tools that uh, many of them are offering um, uh, extended free trials right now. Um, so that's that's great. But all right, so email saved carts. So you can you can email previously saved carts to your customers so they can purchase items they may have been looking at in store online. If so, and if you want to take it a step further, there's a tool called Endear that will help you do that. It's essentially a CRM and messaging app in one. It allows you to um, reach your customers through email and SMS, um, and it also works as a uh, like a client, you know, client relationship management app for in-store when you're back, you know, in in retail. So this is a great app that that works on both platforms or both channels. Um, email automation. Uh, Shopify has basic email automation in there. They just launched uh, an email portion of their app where you can send out newsletters. Uh, so that's great. It's also got real basic um, abandoned cart functionality in there. Make sure that you're sending out abound abandoned cart messages. As I mentioned, that's one of the top three most valuable emails in terms of you know generating sales from email. Um, so make sure you've got that on there. If you want to take it to the next, lap, uh, next step and the next level, 
Clavio is what I recommend. Uh, Clavio also will, it's a, it's a marketing automation program. And so it will allow you to set up, you know, that welcome flow that I was talking about to uh, welcome. If people go to your website and you've got a pop-up offer, you can then email them and introduce them to your brand, right? Uh, it's got, you can build out really advanced abandoned cart flows. I would start out simple. Um, you know, a lot of times the first email I will send them just reminds them, hey, you have something in your cart. And apps like Clavia will actually show them the products that they left in their cart. Um, and then the, the next step would be to potentially introduce a discount code. So that's kind of how I start. First one, no discount code, just remind them. Next step, show them the discount code. Uh, and then it can get more complicated from there, but that's how it would get started. Anyhow, Clavio is a great way to get started. Um, leveraging a loyalty program. So you can use your loyalty program to incentivize customers to do all kinds of things. Um, you know, you can have uh, referral programs. You can um, incentivize them to, to get points on purchases, referring friends by sharing on social. Um, so uh, I've seen these work really well. Um, if you don't already have any kind of a loyalty program in place, uh, there's an app called Marcelo that works really well with Shopify point of sale, uh, as well as Shopify e-commerce. Um, and I believe that they have, uh, they're offering 50% off uh, their, their prices for the next six months. Um, and they've got a 30 day trial. So that's something you could uh, check out pretty uh, easily without too much risk. Um, also implementing curbside pickup and local delivery. So there's two level Shopify just recently uh, in response to everything that's happening right now, implemented um, local delivery or uh, curbside pickup options in the app. Um, but uh, there's an app called Zappy It, um, which is really great at this. It takes it to the next level where you can have customers actually schedule pickup times and delivery times uh, in the app. So they can make a purchase, schedule the time, and it really automates the whole curbside pickup um, sort of flow, right? Of alerting them when their product, when their, you know, products are ready to be picked up. Um, and also it can help you schedule like a delivery uh, route and timing. So if you do local delivery, um, let's see Zapia, they're offering uh, an extended 45 day free trial right now. Um, reducing the limit for your free shipping. So customers love free shipping and the perceived value is uh, sometimes two and three X what it actually costs you. Um, you know, they've done studies that uh, shipping costs can be one of the, the things that stops people in their tracks during the checkout process. It's usually listed as the number one item. Um, so adjusting that, that limit for free shipping, if you can try reducing the minimum uh, order limit for free shipping so that more people are receiving free shipping. And make sure that you prominently display that information, you know, I would recommend at the top of your website in an announcement bar. Um, and finally, look at your return policy. Um, you know, in light of all the store closures, returns and exchanges can be more difficult for customers, right, than they're used to if they're used to, to shopping with you in your store. And that could prohibit online purchasing. So, um, you know, people don't want to be stuck with things that don't fit or that they, that they don't like. So you may consider extending your exchange policy, uh, you know, in acknowledgement of the current climate. And that can help alleviate some buyer doubts and help push them uh, over the edge in terms of making a sale if, if they had a reservation there. So I've gone over a ton of things and I've left room for Q&A. But, you know, in summary, Online sales have been a lifeline to many businesses right now. So if you're not already doing uh, online sales, there's no better time than right now to actually work on getting that set up. Using platforms like Shopify or Squarespace, and there's other new platforms that are, that are coming out all the time, you can get your products listed online in short order. And using a lot of these free trials, you could even make that happen with very little cash outlay uh, in the, you know, the coming months. Um, I've, you know, you may need to reimagine the way that you deliver products and services. Um, I just have an example, uh, pivot produce They're they're to my knowledge, not on Shopify or, or anything like that, but that's a, that's a service that, that my family uses and their business model used to be delivering locally grown produce to chefs and restaurants. And obviously 
you know, that, that at least initially was not happening as all the restaurants went down. Now more people are offering um, curbside pickup, but still volume is way down. So they pivoted to putting together boxes of local goods and produce and delivering it straight to consumers' homes. Um, I believe on a weekly basis, we get a box from them each week and they've been super responsive to requests. So we like um, the barrio bread. And so uh, they added that to our basket and flour. We were having a hard time getting flour. They added that to the basket. And so they're collecting locally uh, produced goods um, from, from different uh, sources, right? And putting it together in a basket and delivering it as a recurring service. So that, I thought that was a really clever way. And I've, there's lots of examples of things that local businesses have done. But um, if you are looking to get onto Shopify, they have, uh, they're offering their plans free for 90 days. Um, so you could get up and running uh, without having to you know, you know, be on one of their paid plans. What you do, the actual mechanics of it is you sign up, you select which paid plan you want to be on, and then you don't get charged for uh, the next 90 days. So anyhow, um, let's see if there's uh, any questions. That's great. Thanks so much, Kurt. Um, yeah. If, just a little thing. If you stop sharing your screen, we can be side by side here. Mm. Um, so I wanted to kick us off with a question. Um, I wanted to see, I know you, you know, you use Shopify and you, you, that's like what you use as your platform. Um, I wanted to know one, what makes Shopify stand apart from others? And two, um, are there other platforms out there that would work well for, for folks that are looking to sell online? Yeah, great question. Um, I think right now, one of the things that makes Shopify stand apart is their, all these apps that I was mentioning, because Shopify has so much momentum, all the best app developers are, um, are working on Shopify. They have the most support. So there's apps that will do almost anything right now. That's not the case with some of the other platforms. Um, so you just have the widest selection and the most support, uh, because they have a really strong partner network. Um, they're also releasing new updates all the time, which is great, but other, other platforms are too. So Squarespace is one that I know a lot of local retailers use. I think maybe Monsoon Chocolates is using Squarespace, if I remember correctly. Uh, they've sort of pivoted to doing curbside delivery or curbside pickup and, and everything. So that's another good way to go. Yeah. I think Monsoon Chocolates is now selling breakfast bagels too, in some capacity. Uh, just a random tidbit for everyone who's here. Um, yeah. I really want to try them. So if anyone has, let me know. Um, I'll put it on my list. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to do that for the next lunch. Everyone bring their, their bagel in. Um, great. So another question here is, for someone that's already selling on Shopify, what would be a next step to really drive traffic to a specific product? That's a great question and a, a big one in, you know, in summary, Paid traffic is usually the way to go if you want to really scale things up. Uh, and paid traffic is kind of a whole another you know, webinar, but I would just get started with a uh, platform. Like Facebook is, is really king right now in terms of driving product sales. So, and the great thing is that on the same Facebook ad platform, you can advertise on Facebook and on Instagram. You can even you know, build one set of ads that will go to both platforms. So that's where I would get you know, started and you can, if you have an existing customer list, you can upload that to Facebook and create what they call a lookalike audience, um, which is a, a unique new audience of people that, that uh, sort of look like in terms of their buying behaviors, your existing customers. So that would be a good way to get started. And if you've already done that, then there's lots of things you can do to scale it up. You can feel free to reach out to me and I can give you some more tips. Um, I've also got videos that I've put together on, on this subject as well. Awesome. That's so great. Um, super helpful. Julie said, thanks, Kurt. Um, also, another note from Kristen from Why I Love Where I Live. She said that they switched from Square pay, Squarespace to Shopify at the beginning of all of this and have been so impressed. Um, so that's Yeah, that's Shopify has been super responsive during, during all of this, introducing new features. Uh, and they're, they're great to partner with, which I think that contributes to their success. You know, partners like me um, work well with Shopify and there's a lot of them. So when you move to Shopify, there's lots of support, uh, which is great. It makes it easy to have, you know, to find help. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Um, 
Kurt, another question is with folks that are now, I mean, that are selling everything online with increased, I guess, fear, you know, what are, what are some things that people are doing that are like sanitizing products or just making, ensuring that their products are as clean and they're arriving safely to folks? Have you seen what some companies are doing? That's a great question. I can't say that I have seen anything specific in that department. Um, I know that, um, you know, a lot of times people are having, like, if you have that update bar at the top of your page that says, hey, this is what we're, we're still shipping. Here's our shipping times for a little bit more information on what's happening right now. Click here and it can link to sort of an update page. And that can be where you explain what you're doing if you're taking yeah. any special steps. Um, also, if you send outgoing emails to your customer list, you know, people are getting overwhelmed with all the COVID update emails, but, um, you know, maybe mentioning that in some of, in some of these areas. Just having that available for those who are interested. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. There's been an abundance of, um, COVID-19 emails. And when I see them, I'm like, right. Yeah. A lot of people are just <laughs> dragging them out yeah, of the inbox. Definitely. Yeah. But still important to have that information. Absolutely. Um, another question. Do you have any tips for building your Shopify site to convert visitors to sales? So let's see. A lot of it's going to be really, you know, sort of problem solving based on your store and your products. The way that I look at it is um, I'm really sort of a data driven you know, person in terms of these decisions. So I'll log into my Shopify analytics and I'll look at things like what is my add to cart rate? What's the rate at which people are adding to cart? What's my initiate checkout rate? And what's my purchase rate? And I, you know, I have sort of baselines for some of these things. Like I like to have a purchase sort of a checkout rate of 1% or above. If it's below that, I know that there's some sort of a problem and I'll look to Google and, and I say some sort of a problem, but I know it can be improved. Right. And I look to Google analytics usually to help me figure out where that is. So I'll map out things like, okay, from traffic, how many people made it to a product page as opposed to just making it to the home page and bouncing, right? How many people actually visited a product page? And of those, how many people added to cart? If you see that people are adding things to cart, but they stop at the very end, that could mean that you have a problem with messaging. Maybe you need to work on your, um, on your free shipping, right? The threshold. Um, or a lot of times, uh, shipping isn't clear. So what I'll do in Shopify is I'll adjust the names of shipping instead of just calling it you, you know, USPS standard or whatever it is. I'll actually put in brackets the time range, right? So ships one to five days. This is one seven to 14. This is, you know, and so people have a real expectation of, of what's happening. Um, I think the more information you can provide, the better. If there is a follow-up question to that, though, I, I can dive a little deeper into that. But um, yeah, it's just a lot of problem solving. You want to make the the checkout process and the process of learning about your products as simple as possible. Great. And that's kind of my guiding theory. <laughs> it's just simplicity. Yeah. And you did mention actually having something that stuck with me from the presentation was having a separate color for your CTA, you know, like yeah. for the next, whatever that next action item is um, that stuck with me too. Like that specific color for like buy now or shop now or whatever that right. is. Right. Um, and along those same lines, product photography is huge. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, and there's interesting things happening with, with this right now. Like, so for instance, Shopify has just released features and there's more to come where uh, like, I've got a, a client that sells furniture. And so we built out the dimensions of the furniture using the Shopify app and using your phone from the Shopify page, you can actually picture the furniture in your room and see how big it is. Uh, it's, it's mm -hmm. augmented reality. Um, I've got a client that does this with photos as well. So you can actually hold your phone up to the wall and see how big it is on your wall. Um, so those sorts of things can really help where customers are used to being in store and it's hard to buy a couch online because you don't really know how it's going to look. There's lots of cool tools coming out that way too that um, will be interesting to take advantage of in the future. Yeah, that's great. Definitely. Um, so again, you mentioned the threshold for free shipping. Do you have a recommendation for how much free shipping that should be? I mean, you know, you said to limit it, but what's your best recommendation for folks that are getting started and, and want to offer something? Yeah. So it depends on what your goal is. Uh, if your goal is to just, you know, get rid of as many berries as possible, I would 
do free shipping on all orders. Uh, that's going to be the fewest barriers. If your goal is uh, to actually increase average order value, then I'll actually increase. Like if you've already got sales and you're trying to figure out, hey, how can we increase our average order value? I usually recommend setting your free shipping threshold 20% higher than your average order value um, to kind of get people to reach up one product higher. But as far as if you're having a problem getting as many sales as you want, I would see if you can throw free shipping in there. Um, in some cases, like I have a client who sells um, shirts and hoodies and things like that, and they also sell stickers. We've, you know, we've set it up so you don't get free shipping if you just buy a, a $5 sticker. And so we've kind of looked at what's the cheapest, you know, actual clothing item that we sell. Um, and if there's other items that are, are cheaper than that, we'll set the threshold and say, hey, you, have, you spend at least $10 with us and you get free shipping. That way we don't need to do it for little things. Right. Right. Yeah. I love that. That's personally, that's a big incentive for me when they're like, spend $50 and get free shipping. I'm always adding things to my cart. It makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it definitely does. Um, the psychology of that is funny. Um, but that's great. This was, Kurt, this was super helpful. Um, if anyone has any other questions, um, go ahead and, and toss those in. But I really just wanted to thank everyone for attending today and really thank Kurt for providing such a valuable presentation. Um, I will just how you broke everything down was super helpful and providing those, um, providing those links or providing those, um, businesses that are offering free trials is incredibly helpful right now. Um, and Super. actually, Kurt, are you accepting new clients currently? That's, that just came in. We are for some services. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You know, um, my email address was on the last slide, but I didn't show it for very long. It's just my first name, Kurt, K-U-R-T at prosdept.co. Or you can find me on Twitter if you're a Twitter person at Kurt Bullock. Uh, I answer lots of questions on Twitter all the time. So Great. I'm typing your info in here, Kurt. Oh, super. Yeah. Um, perfect. Well, I just wanted to say a huge thank you. Um, so everyone here, if you have questions, they can go out to Kurt. You can also message me um, if you have any other questions at Alex at Lost Suprema Works. Um, typing that in for you all as well. Um, and if you would ever want to, if you want to stay in, in touch with, with more updates of the Lost Suprema lunches we have coming up, you can, you can just email me to get on our newsletter or you can go to LostSupremaWorks.com to sign up for our newsletter. Um, but this was such a pleasure, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, and we'll be sending this recording out to, um, to everyone who joined today. So you can have these notes for the future. Um, but again, thank you, Kurt. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely rest of your week. We're halfway through, although does the day really matter anymore? Um, <laughs> but have a, have a lovely day. We'll, we'll see you around. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone. Right. Bye, everyone.